Evidence-based practice, I think, is absolutely client or patient or family-centred. And it's our job as clinicians to interpret this evidence, but to relate it to this individual, their preferences, the culture that they're living in, the setup of their home. And we need to be able to help people determine this, this benefit of intervention against no intervention. And that's always an option. And so in following these principles of evidence-based practice, I think that we really, it goes hand in hand with ethical healthcare. If we're evidence-based and we think of the three cornerstones, we will be ethically appropriate. So one more um, framework that I think is useful when we're thinking about evidence-based care and quality care with people is uh, David Seedhouse's grid, which you can just Google on the internet and you'll find a version of this out there. David Seedhouse was a British um, health ethicist and he got a little bit upset with the way um, some of ethics was being taught and he said, I think we can we can do a bit better than this and we need to think a little bit more broadly than some of the principles that we, um, the narrow way of looking at things. So he he has this thing called the grid and what he encourages us to do is to think about each of these areas. And some of them are going to be relevant and some of them are not going to be relevant. But at least if we've thought about the different areas, we're going to have a more broad based um, and so a more robust decision making process with our families. So the, the more familiar things when we think about ethics and healthcare are in the white level, what they call the principles behind health work. So we need to create autonomy, respect people, respect their autonomy, those sorts of things. And then the next layer out is the level of duty. So I have a duty to do good. Clinicians should be beneficent. I have a duty to minimise or remove harm, to be non-maleficent. And then the next layer out is making us think a, a little more broadly than perhaps we're used to thinking. So is the outcome that we need to be negotiating around the most beneficial outcome for the patient? And that's traditionally where we think about things. But could it be something to do with the family? So it's all very well talking about feeding tubes for this tiny baby who's um, in a critical situation. But the family may have no idea how to handle the technology or be able to afford the feed, uh, the tube feed itself. And so what's going to be beneficial for that whole family to deal with? What might be beneficial for society? Not so much that we deal with this, but if you think about um, conditions such as TB, well, it's all very well me being autonomous and having raging TB and wanting to uh, you know, discharge myself from hospital, but that's not good for society, so you're gonna put me in quarantine. And then the outside level, equally important, the level of practicality. What resources are available? What does my code of practice say? What's legal? And so if we force ourselves to think about these different aspects, we're going to have a, a more solid foundation for the, the thoughts that we have as clinicians, and it will help us to engage better with our families who actually have to live out in the real world and are trying desperately to deal with what's practical. So what does informed mean in terms of us as clinical experts? Well, it means that we need to be informed and not eminent. An informed clinician or academic is not someone who simply provides lots of education to others. We actually have to listen and have our values and constructs challenged and be open to changing our understanding. We must triangulate across sources and we have a duty to reflect on our practice as advised by Jay Katz, who was a physician in his book from 1984 called The Silent World of Doctor and Patient. 
and I strongly recommend you read this book. Katz looks at the traditional one-way trust relationship between a physician and his or her patient. And he reviews this position in relation to the changing view of good care with informed consent and patient autonomy.